I was recently commissioned to make two display stands out of epoxy for these pieces of coral, and this is how it went. It's kind of my go-to here for making forms for pouring epoxy. Uh, typically just use some three-quarter inch particle board, melamine if you have it, wrap it all in Tyvek tape. I have even wrapped my melamine and Tyvek tape. I've never tried the mold release method. I've seen people have some issues with that. Never had any issues with Tyvek tape. Basically, for those that don't know, Tyvek tape is just a sheathing tape that you can get at a big box store, probably order it on Amazon. I uh, have plenty of that sitting around and chunks of particle board all over the place, so figured I'd whip out a little mold here. Uh, pocket hole screws to screw everything down, and and usually I'll run a bead of clear silicone on the inside and outside, and had 100% success with that through the years. And like I said, no leaks, no problems, no sticking. Everything breaks apart nice and clean. That's kind of what you want when you're doing this. Uh, they have silicone molds you can buy, but you're kind of stuck with certain shapes. So this gives you a little opportunity to custom make any size shapes you want. Same method I use when I'm doing a table or any kind of deep pour stuff like that. I had some 3D printed 90 degree brackets here. I'm just using to make sure everything's pretty close to square. I'm going to cut everything down as I pull them out of the molds anyway to get the final dimensions. So this wasn't too necessary, but you know it's nice to get it as close as you can. The center area there is dead space and I have the right side and the left side is where I'll be actually pouring the epoxy. Uh, I just needed that center spot to get those pocket hole screws for the center dividers. In. And here's some clear silicone just putting small beads on the inside. I end up wiping them with my finger. I put them on the outside and the outside edges, anywhere I can find a spot to put silicone. I did miss the initial pouring of the, the epoxy itself. I was kind of concentrated on a table that I was pouring next to it at the time. So here's a photo that I had of it in the mold, but that's pretty much all I got as far as that goes. Once I took the blocks out of the mold, took them over to the table saw so I could square everything up and get them ready to cut them down to their final dimension. I'm just running some light passes on them just to get them kind of squared up. Uh, a lot of access material at this point in time. We haven't really decided on a final size and shape to how they were going to be. So just wanted to leave as much bulk material as possible so that I had enough room to trim everything down when it finally came down to the final dimensions. Here I was just blocking them in so that I could uh, surface them with a router sled. Never tried to surface anything that small before, but it seemed to work out okay. Uh, there's the table in the background there that I was uh, working on at the time of these, trying to surface everything at the same time. That's in another video. I just hit them with some 80 grit just to get them all sanded down smooth. Once we finally got the dimensions that we were looking for, uh, actually ended up taking that full piece there, cutting that in half, and then cutting one of the halves in half to make the two bases. So the large white piece of coral got one full length of that, 
and the smaller blue piece was one of these smaller squares that you see me cutting right there. Just using a chamfer bit on the router table and giving them a nice little edge profile. So after that I took a little block and some sandpaper and started getting all the edge details by hand. Uh, it seemed to be the only way to get a consistent straight lines of the sanding marks going across all those chamfered edges. Uh, I was able to flip the sander over and, and hit all the flat surfaces with like that and that seemed to work pretty well. Uh, blowing everything off. Uh, here I'm at 220 which was one step down. I believe I ended these things on 320 was my final uh, grid of sanding. We did want to keep more of a frosted look than going perfectly clear, which I think helps in the epoxy in general. Uh, they, they do have a tendency to yellow, you know, super clear epoxy is what I typically use as far as a brand goes. And it's the least yellowing out of all the brands that I've did tests on through the years and they just seem to always be a good end result in that stuff. And cleaned them off and finally ready to drill some holes. And I think I had everything pretty much set where I needed it to be. And kind of went for it. I got my depth set, brought it over to the drill press, uh, got my holes bored out, cleaned everything out, air blasted it, um, check, check, make sure my little rods were good. Uh, I actually did end up finishing these with Penetrol and that seemed to hold up pretty good. I've done some previous tests with epoxy and Penetrol and it seems to be a good overall coat that you can, you can add on to it and and it will give it some protection and kind of kind of keep the clean look to it without getting too crazy with other finishes. And for the most nerve-wracking, tedious part of the entire project was trying to drill in these most likely expensive pieces of real coral. Now my only experience with doing anything close to this is the fact that I am a contractor and I've remodeled hundreds and hundreds of bathrooms over the years. And I do all the stone work and tile work myself, so what I use to go through glass or tile or concrete or stucco or anything, you know, hard surface materials like that is these glass bits. And this, these are, I think, the quarter inch Bosch made glass bits and they've progressively gotten better over the years. And it was the only drill bit I could figure that would kind of do what I needed to do in this situation. Um, there was no way for me to make any, any jigs to hold them down. I was just worried the whole time I would snap one of the little arms off everything went okay. One of the other main things was just kind of up to me as far as trying to position them correctly so that I could get the balance proper so that they wouldn't fall one way or the other. I ended up using a uh, medium thickness CA glue for putting the posts in. Um, I used the accelerator on the the coral pieces themselves when I attached the post inside there and as far as the base goes the main concern was to not overflow it enough to where there'd be any squeezing and work like a charm I calculated so many drops to go into the hole so that once I pushed the peg in it would just squeeze in just enough so that everything would be good and it turned out great and I snapped a couple photos before I sent them off to their new home and uh, very happy with the overall project. Uh, everything turned out better than expected and more importantly the clients were very happy with their new pieces. I think uh, one of them ended up on a vanity in a bathroom and the other one was for a nightstand.
pretty much it for these guys. I appreciate you all sticking around and watching the process. Thank you. Thank you.